There are some places around the world you might not think of as needing computers. Africa, for example, might need water, food or medicines first. Most classrooms need more books, but books alone won't enable these Kenyan children to play their full part in the modern world. The continent has some fine doctors, but they're mainly in the cities, far away from where most of the population live. And if you're disabled and living in a developing country, there are precious few organisations that can really help. To solve these problems, we don't need lots of cash. In fact, it hardly need cost us anything at all, if you'd like to help. At this Kenyan secondary school, these Maasai teenagers learn the ways of their ancestors. But that doesn't mean they have to live in the past. Like hundreds of other schools, Kilgora Secondary couldn't afford computers. But now pupils here are getting the skills needed to join Africa's new workforce. Provided by ComputerAid, these PCs are the envy of schools for 100 miles around. In terms of employment, it has also improved a lot since after you finished high school with the knowledge of computer, it's easier to get a job outside there. Leaving Nairobi, and suddenly you're in the middle of nowhere, high above the plains of East Africa. Three quarters of Africans live in rural areas. Getting medical care to them can be tricky if the specialist who can help is 300 miles away. Dr Sadie and his team look after 260 patients a day, treating almost every ailment. Today he's checking up on Mohammed, who's broken his leg. But the fracture is in an unusual place, one he's not seen before. Even a highly skilled doctor can't be expected to know everything. So once a week, or in an emergency, he sends pictures and x-rays to the top specialists in the country, using a laptop, scanner and digital camera, all provided by ComputerAid. Rather than guess what might be the next step, Dr Sadie can tap into a network of expertise and have a greater chance of getting a correct diagnosis to give his patient the best chance of recovery. Another mystery. What looked like an uncomfortable blockage turns out to be a potentially fatal complication. Doctors at Makindu knew something was seriously wrong, but urgently needed an expert opinion. When it comes, it's bad news. Left untreated, the intestine will burst within a few days, killing the patient. But crucially, Dr Sadie is also told how he can rescue the situation. In this particular case, it's actually like solved the problem. It's like it's the one which made the diagnosis for me. It did like 90% of the job because of, not, because of the communication. Uh, like in many other cases, it's, it's like the, the critical point. You're stuck, what do you do? You're far from the city, you're far from the good facilities, what do you do? So this was my link. This was my lifeline for the patient. Sadly, many countries don't have the means to provide their rural doctors with telemedicine computing. Fortunately, Makindu Hospital is supported by ComputerAid, and that support isn't just saving lives. 50% more people here volunteer for HIV tests. Now results can be emailed, and the postal costs paid for by the patients are reduced. Ordering online has cut drug delivery times from 28 days to just four. Another answer for Dr Sadie. The immediacy of the computer link makes all the doctors working at Makindu feel a lot less remote. Blindness affects a high proportion of the population in Africa. A few, like Joseph, find a way to make a living, but many get no help and are sidelined by society. But ComputerAid wants its PCs to be usable by all. So working alongside local experts, it funds adaptive technologies, giving the visually impaired, like Lewis here, new opportunities to continue her education right through to university. So I don't now use anyone to help me write it out, but I do type my, my assignment. 
Lewis can hear what she's writing and Martin can use what little sight he does have to see and explore the internet. It's hard to overestimate the impact of these projects in countries with few discrimination laws and little help from the state. We cannot afford new computers to place in their hands, definitely. And this is a major step forward for us. Over the few years we've been working with Computer Ed, you know, the partnership began from provision of equipment. Today we've moved beyond provision of equipment, computer hardware, to now looking at uh, cost-effective mechanisms to enable people access. The success of these projects goes beyond learning. Welcome to Safaricom Customer Care. Lilian speaking. How may I help you? Safaricom is the biggest company in East Africa. It's now offering full-time employment to the visually impaired. It's a massive step forward and one that would have been unlikely to have happened without the adaptive technologies supplied by ComputerAid and its partners. With the training that they have been provided and the tools that we have, they are able to perform just like anyone else. Yeah? And our customers are not even able to pick up that they are talking to somebody who has a challenge. So, want to be part of the solution? Well, the magic begins when you donate a PC or laptop you no longer use. Here at ComputerAid's London HQ, some of the world's largest companies, along with individuals, have donated their old PCs. The charity prides itself on data security, so first up, all hard drives are wiped to ensure no residual data survives. The process used here is approved by the US Department of Defence and by the UK's intelligence services. It's trusted by some pretty big names which have chosen to support the charity's work. It's obviously a concern when you're giving away computers, there's always a data protection issue. Our IT departments have checked it out and they were really happy, uh, particularly as it's done to a standard that's approved by the UK Secret Services. So we're really confident to go out to all our businesses and advise them to donate their computers when they're refurbishing. Once stripped down, refurbished and reborn with fresh software, the PCs are shipped to one of more than 100 developing countries. These PCs aren't just parachuted into places like Africa. People on the ground will be trained and technical support made available before the computers are finally delivered, guaranteeing a longer, productive lifespan. And here in Nairobi, charities are already looking at ways to safely recycle each PC once it really has come to the end of its days. These monitors are being refurbished and turned into portable TVs. And this is Kenya's first dedicated electronics recycling plant. ComputerAid itself is also actively involved in a campaign to reduce e-waste. When you choose to support ComputerAid, you're tapping into a wealth of experience in delivering the best quality computers to where they're needed the most. Its educational programme teaches IT and provides on-site support if things go wrong. It's a secure way to give hope to millions, providing the donor with peace of mind. It's a cost-effective way of donating and to be part of the huge difference ComputerAid is making. And it's a green way to reduce your environmental footprint. It's also a great way to make a lot of people smile. It makes me proud and um, it makes me feel independent. I'm able to compete with other people. When schools receive computers, I wish you can be there to see. The students are very happy and even the community come. To witness. At the end of the month, I'm always the first one to submit my reports. There's nothing really I don't do. I'm actually, I, I can say that I'm even a little bit better than the certain people here, some of them. I'll be proud to say that.